we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need. Standing here, you can almost feel it. It's energy in the air. Energy from thousands of everyday Americans. All ages, all backgrounds, and all coming to Washington to have their voices heard. They know that now is the time for climate action, and you can get involved too. Uh, my name is Nova Silvi, and I'm from Texas A&M University. And I care about climate change because I work on animals that I believe are being affected by climate change. I've worked on the Florida key deer, and uh, we've noticed in the last 100 years we've had a, about a four-inch increase in uh, sea level rise. Lovers of wildlife took a stand and told our leaders to protect wildlife and wild places from the impacts of global warming. In Indiana, we have evidence that 65% of our bird species are spending the winter farther north than 30 years ago. The time to act is now. Please talk with your representatives uh, in your home state. Ask them to vote yes on the climate bill with funding for protecting wildlife. Can't make it to Washington? No worries. We can help you turn the volume up on Congress. Go to nwf.org slash climate action and make your voice heard. You too can add your voice and support President Obama's call to Congress to enact comprehensive climate and energy legislation this year that puts a cap on carbon emissions. Cap and trade sounds complex, but it's not. It boils down to technology innovation and the marketplace working to protect our environment while growing our economy. As heat trapping gases build up in the atmosphere, they stay there for decades. So we have to think ahead and set clear goals now for reducing emissions. A cap and trade plan puts a limit on the total amount of these gases that can be released by industry. The limit gradually gets lower and lower over time, so industry is emitting less and less. That limit is the cap in a cap and trade plan, and that's what reduces pollution. The trading portion of a cap and trade system is the key to the economic success of this approach. The program provides flexibility to every business to determine the best way to reduce pollution. Companies that lead in innovation and can reduce pollution with clean technologies and concepts will profit. Companies that have a harder time reducing pollution can lighten their load by paying other companies to make even deeper pollution reductions. In short, the cap and trade plan favors the marketplace instead of heavy-handed regulations. It's a simple common sense solution where the science determines the goals, businesses innovate and become cleaner, and the marketplace allows companies to minimize their costs and profit by doing the right thing. Cap and trade has worked before. It worked in the 1990s when we dealt with acid rain and the first President Bush put in place a program to reduce pollution and end up reducing pollution by 40% at about one-tenth the cost. It's time for a new kind of environmentalism, driven by the knowledge that a sound ecology and a strong economy can coexist. It worked because of innovation. It worked because of, essentially, at the end of the day, companies made a profit by doing good by the environment. Soon, sportsmen and women will join the chorus of everyday Americans supporting President Obama's call for a green future and a cap on carbon emissions. And you can join the movement too. Hunters and anglers, people on the ground that are aware of changes in our environment can be the front lines of defense to both spread the information through education and then to take action. We need leadership, we need your voice, and time is running out. Now is the time to pass climate and energy legislation that supports a green economy. I'm David Mizajewski. Join National Wildlife Federation and be part of the solution. <laughs>